It is indeed my great pleasure and honor to welcome you all today to our Vention Bar Dinner for 2016. This is the second one that we're having and it is indeed um, a diff definitely a pleasure to invite you and welcome you all today. The uh, program that we have... Um, I, I would like to be very, very short actually and I wanted to just talk about a couple of things that I think is very important. Uh, in particular with the legal fraternity, and I think that is the issue of mentoring. I think Justice Temo talked about how a lot of the junior lawyers are appearing before the, before the members of the judiciary, with the senior lawyers making lots of money. Whether it is that or whether it is a lack of mentoring, I'm not sure. But definitely from our perspective, what we do see is that there appears to be a lack of mentoring within generally in the private practice. And it is very critical, at, at least in the SG's chambers, we spend a lot of time and money in the mentoring system. We actually have a proper system now where you have a senior mentor, a deputy mentor, and a couple of different mentors that an individual staff member could go to uh, to be able to get assistance. What is also very interesting, I think, is that level of investment that is required by the people, the senior practitioners in the, in the private practice, to be able to get a good caliber of legal practitioners within the fraternity and to actually hold it in good stead in the future. I think that is very, very critical. How the law society, what role they can play in that and indeed the senior practitioners can play, that's something that you can of course decide. If you do want to have discussions with that, you're quite happy to do that. Uh, and what, one of the things that we were also thinking about given the fact that now, if you look at lit uh, litigation generally, uh, it is the scope is expanding. Uh, for example, with the advent of new technology coming in with legal contracts now in different new areas, I think there is an opportunity for members in the private practice to actually know what is happening in that space. And that space actually is provided through the uh, Solicitor General's office. And we can, of course, be quite open to have those discussions uh, in respect of those new areas of the law. And I think it's very important because it will ultimately actually help the bench too uh, when we do have these matters coming along now. Uh, similarly, as you know that we've got a program with the ILO uh, at the moment where we send a number of our lawyers uh, down in uh, Turin, in, in, Ro in Italy, and in Geneva also to get them up to speed with the new changes in the employment relations promulgation and the new standards. And I think uh, to help also again with the tribunals, it's good if the legal practitioners themselves in the private practice are fully aware of the changes that have taken place and indeed in, in respect of the uh, international standards that have taken place and the international standards that are being applied uh, in these new areas. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for that, for the private practice to work in conjunction with the SG's office and the various other uh, departments. As you would have uh, noticed that some of the tribunals that used to be outside the domain of the judiciary is now within the domain of the judiciary. So the Honorable Chief Justice now is actually making an appointments to various tribunals which he did not do previously. Now that includes areas such as LTA, uh, includes now the Employment Relations uh, Tribunal, uh, I think the Immigration too. Um, so the Honorable Chief Justice is actually now appointing magistrates to actually sit in these tribunals. So it's very important in order for us to be able to have good case management, to be able to have a good flow as far as the cases are being heard, for the lawyers themselves in private practice to be aware of the changes in the law. Uh, the second point I'd like to make also, I think, is a, is a, is a question of uh, uh, the general ethics. Uh, it is very, very important, I think, to be able to maintain that. Uh, we do hear a lot of stories in respect of the breach of the ethics. Uh, we recently, for example, have a couple of our younger lawyers who've appeared before some of the masters. And as the Justice uh, Temo, I think, may have alluded to, um, I think some of the senior practitioners have a, a particular, to be diplomatic, condescending attitude to some of the younger practitioners, in particular when they appear before the masters. And we've heard a lot of stories uh, about that. And in particular, if those practitioners are women, uh, we do get a lot of that. Uh, nearly 90% of the practitioners in the SG's office are women. And so you, you can actually see how lawyers do get treated, in particular if they're females and in particular by the male counterparts. Uh, so I think there is a, it's a combination of probably ageism and also 
uh, you know, uh, the, some uh, gender sort of bias. Linked to that, of course, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's very important is also uh, you would see, uh, those of you who may be attending the AGES conference, um, the alternative dispute resolution. I think, again, to bring about efficiency within the legal profession in Fiji, uh, a lot of us need to be attuned to um, alternative dispute resolution processes. We have uh, a couple of uh, sessions at the AGES conference. We're getting people from Ancitro to come and talk about uh, ADR. And as you know, the uh, Chief Registrar, together with the Chief Justice, they've set up the Mediation and the Alternative Dispute Resolution Center. We have seen now, in particular with the outsourcing of a lot of uh, government work, in particular with infrastructure work, uh, that there is an opportunity for Fiji to become a bit of a mini Singapore in respect of having ADRs uh, and mediation. Uh, in particular with now a lot of the contracts, whether through it's through the aid processes, you have a lot of the, uh, so for example, the Australian and New Zealand governments are using private companies to now, you know, give out aid. Uh, so they use, in fact, in Fiji's case now, they've got a head private company that will now deal with the various projects. What they then do is actually have, you know, individual contracts with people who actually provide the services. So Fiji actually can become a, a mini uh, Singapore in terms of alternative dispute resolution and mediation, and I'm glad that the Honorable Chief Justice has taken up that initiative, and I know he himself has been dealing a lot with Singapore, and they have been providing a lot of assistance in that. So there are they about the three key features I just wanted to highlight, uh, without getting too heavy about some of the uh, topics. Uh, the other point, of course, you may have seen in the advertisement, lastly, is uh, we have now consolidated the laws of Fiji. Uh, the laws are now uh, revised as of 1st of December, uh, of this year, and uh, they will be now be available um, uh, from the AGES conference. It's being launched at the AGES conference on the 9th. I'm told by the Solicitor General if you place an order then you might get a good, good deal. I'm not quite sure what, what he's doing. But uh, it will also be available online. So we have actually struck a deal with LexisNexis. We've paid to close to nearly $2 million to get all of this done. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the AGES Chamber has done a fantastic job, in particular in the past one year, uh, to get it all up to speed. As you know, the 85 version of the Consolidated Laws of Fiji also had some errors in it. They've all been rectified. You've got annotations now. And um, so there are, about 20, there are 20 volumes, and they'll be launched on the 9th. The hard copies will be available. We've only got five sets printed uh, to be given to the respective heads of the executive and, of course, the judiciary. Um, but the hard copies will be available in the new year, but it should be, should be online, sorry, um, once it's launched. So that's, that's good news. Uh, it'll make your law, uh, work a lot easier and make the law a lot more accessible to ordinary Fijians. So uh, thank you very much. I uh, wish you all a very good Christmas and a fantastic new year. Vinaka, thank you.